this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. What I thought we'd do in this video is continue our discussion we've been having regarding cryptocurrencies. Over the last few years, um, I've had a lot of people ask me what Bitcoin is, what cryptocurrencies are, what blockchain is, and how, how people can get involved in this disruptive innovation and disruptive innovation is something we've talked about in the past is um, sort of if you look at our personal finance playlist and cryptocurrency playlist and whatnot that we have on the um, youtube channel we put out a video regarding disruptive innovation and disruptive innovation is basically some form of technology that comes into play that challenges the status quo gives people options to bypass sort of uh, established industries established companies and offers a brand new perspective brand new option to conduct business in right or produce something with right and we've talked a little bit about this in previous videos and previous videos specifically and um, this is really related uh, cryptocurrencies is really related to how technology is being rolled out in our current economy specifically related to finance because what's happening what's happening really with uh, blockchain technology i've sort of been referring to this as web 3.0 when i'm talking with friends or whatnot right we've had you know the internet came to be in the 19 well long time ago in the 1960s or something it was through government and military and stuff like this but it was really started rolling on 1990s and 2000s we saw web 2.0 kicking in with live stream not live stream but streaming video and how our access to content became easier to acquire and platforms were available for us to consume content and to share content right and for me the introduction of cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology is really the next step, which is Web 3.0 for me, because what it's doing is basically bringing finance into the digital world in large part and giving people the opportunity to decentralize our economy, decentralize finance, right? And this is something that we're about to, you know, just create a vision and we'll talk about it a little bit, but it's really, in large part related to automation right and again something we've talked about in the past when we talked about personal finance and stuff like this and when we talked about automation I was you know I laid out some videos that we we're going to talk about when we talk about our current economic system when it came to what the definition of money and currency and what growth rate capital accumulation of capital and differential accumulation and all this jazz was right but before we got into that what I ended up doing was giving guys uh sort of sharing with you my history with bitcoin with cryptocurrencies which began in 2010 2011 or so and we put out a video on that and what we did from there was basically kick that off into defining what money and currency are and how we can take a look at economics in terms of in in the terminology we defined in that video and take a look at different growth rates uh, when it comes to personal finance when it comes to investing when it comes to our economy and then from there what we ended up doing was creating a visual of how cryptocurrencies blockchain technology what it really offers us in terms of decentralization and a new way of doing business right and what i want to do is sort of expand on that right and there's a lot there that i just mentioned doing a little review of what we've covered so far and you don't really need to know all that information to appreciate what we're about to talk about right but basically the name of the gist is this when people ask me what cryptocurrencies are what blockchain technology is right and how that's playing out in the world the way i interpret that question is basically people asking me how they can incorporate this disruptive innovation into their lives right and right now this is something that i want to talk to you about and it's really related again i'm going to emphasize this right it's really related to automation right aside from the disruptive innovation it's really related to automation and for me what 
blockchain technology is allowing us to do is allowing us to automate finance, automate bureaucracy. And what that's doing is getting rid of gatekeepers, is bypassing gatekeepers, is bypassing control mechanisms within our societies for whatever country you live in, is bypassing regulators that may be working to maintain the status quo, right? It's a game changer, right? So again, this is gonna be very personal on my part, but it should give you a pretty good idea of what I envision and what people, um, why people are considering ICOs, which are basically initial coin offerings. If you've ever done work with Wall Street, if you've ever bought stocks or uh, know how Wall Street works, they're basically the equivalent of IPOs, initial public offerings, but they're initial coin offerings. Uh, sort of basically a sort of a funding mechanism for people that want have an idea for a product, a corporation, a service that they want to provide to the world and they need to get some funding, right? And that was what really uh, made this technology absolutely brilliant uh, for me, right? So consider what I'm doing online right now. And we're gonna just call that Chicho, right? So just assume what I've created online so far is under this umbrella, right? This would be the blogs, articles I've written. This would be the videos I've produced, whatever it might be. So initially what I did for myself back in the mid 2000s or so was start learning software understanding certain platforms, acquiring cameras, tools, hardware, to be able to produce what I'm doing, right? So there was a huge learning curve on my part, and I put a lot of work in the front end to be able to get this stuff done. And that was Chicho, right? All of that work for the first five, six, seven years was being done on the side while I was working on, you know, making enough funds to maintain my life, right? And slowly what happened was there were options available to us to start funding, crowdfunding, and generating certain amount of income for ourselves when it came to creating content online, right? Sharing information. One of those platforms, when we would get direct donations, direct donations, donations right so this was a revenue stream that was coming in right and slowly what happened with YouTube once you were loading on videos on YouTube right YouTube started providing some kind of revenue stream for me and for other creators as well right so YouTube was broken down basically initially it was just ad revenue and then uh, I'm not sure when it really kicked into when Google introduced YouTube Red, but they've, only, they've right now rolled it out into, f into five countries or six countries, and they plan on rolling out YouTube Red to another 100 countries or so on this year and next year, right? So there was a revenue stream coming in. However minor it was, it was a pipeline coming into Chicho, coming into support my work, what I've been creating online, right? People who appreciate what I've been doing. And this goes, this is true for other content creators as well, right? And then YouTube started saying that they were gonna start sharing revenue, ad revenue with content creators, and they introduced YouTube Red as well. So there was another revenue stream coming there. And then what you saw was slowly crowdfunding platforms kicking in. The one that I've basically got involved with was patreon and patreon again is a source of revenue where i can sort of rely on to provide certain amount of funding that i can start doing budget right start managing my life managing my finances where i can start focusing more on the content that i'm creating online such as this video right more recently i've been following my work i went on another platform which is 
live streaming platform which is twitch owned by amazon youtube owned by google right so there's multiple platforms for us available to twitch <laughs> right so there's multiple platforms available for us to share content and live streaming on twitch is another one that i've incorporately rolled out into my repertoire in the last few months right and this as well is a revenue stream right so what's going on in terms of personal finance in terms of managing our finances or budget is with technology with all of this disruptive innovation may it be different types of platforms with internet with crowdfunding with live streaming with direct donations it's allowing uh giving the opportunity for content creators to generate different revenue streams right so we're really moving away from people working at a certain job and having one main source of revenue coming in and it's dispersing that to different revenue streams and to me that is brilliant because you can't put all your eggs in one basket this is extremely important in regards to cryptocurrencies and ICOs okay so twitch is another form of revenue coming in right with twitch I was sort of with the people follow you know uh, following my my work on twitch they recommend that I go on discord so I created a discord platform and there's a mod on mods on twitch and discord that are providing a certain amount of uh, help they have my back in certain ways when it comes to modding and rolling out certain options right and with cryptocurrencies what that allowed us to do was basically crypto, what it basically allowed us to do was have another type of revenue stream coming in right so keep this in mind all of these revenue streams they have the possibility of being cut through outside forces through the gatekeepers right through those who take uh, a piece of the pie right because for twitch and YouTube right for Amazon and Google I believe for both of them they're taking half the money being generated from the ads or from the subscriptions there right so whenever you go through a different type of platform someone else has their hands in the cookie jar right this is web 2.0 okay and there are other types of fundings that have been coming in possibly right so these are the main types of revenue streams or main types of support I've been getting through for my work being created here now back in 2013 the game changed a little bit because I realized or I found out that what you could do is do what's called ICOs initial coin offerings and ICOs right ICOs are the same type of concept as IPOs initial public offerings and initial public offerings when it comes to the stock market and when it comes to Wall Street or whatnot the way it works is basically if you have an idea if you have a company that you think has potential to generate revenue and do good by people right do good by you what you can do is go to basically uh, people who have funds or banks and decide to raise money by offering people a share of your company right so what you could do is create you know there's a whole bunch of regular like regulatory uh, hurdles that you have to go through and it costs a fair bit of money to do this I actually looked into this back in the mid 1990s there was some something that we we're working on that we decided that we might have been able to take it into venture capital right take it into the Vancouver Stock Exchange and we went through a couple of meetings and we realized that there are so many people that wanted to have their hands in the cookie jar right you were given away so much when you wanted to go through that route go through an IPO market go through the stock market right that first of all it made it extremely expensive second of all there was 
a ton of scammers along the way that we met that wanted a piece of the pie and they were basically a pump and dump and the way it really works when it comes to ipos is let's say you ended up getting funding from someone and what they do initially you know angel investors or you're getting funding through a bank or support through a bank or whatever it is right what they would do is take you to a certain level right and then you would have to have to have secondary funding and they basically were sort of passing the baton they would pass the baton to a different uh larger organization or investors that would take you to another exchange or more reputable exchange and they would take a bigger piece of the pie and the initial people might have dropped out and it was a huge it was it, it's it's an interesting way to raise funds that's what ipos are icos are on the same mindset however you're getting rid of all the middlemen right you're getting rid of all the people that have their hands in the cookie jar right and for me what made this disruptive innovation this blockchain technology a game changer was this as soon as i realized that anybody if you had an idea and if you wanted to make it realized and you needed funding beyond just minor for now revenue streams coming in to support your life right if you need an initial large investment to kick things into high gear if you've done the front end work and you've reached that stage right then this is what you could do and what I'm going to do, I'm sort of going to relate it to myself, right? So just imagine me being Chicho, right? I've had funding coming in from all of these resources, and I've been giving back, and I will be giving back some of that stuff, right? Through YouTube is basically creating content and showing appreciation for everyone that's subscribed to me, everyone that's sharing my work, liking my work, and sending their love my way and that that is amazing to me right that has kept me going up to this point okay and that for me creating this content is giving back to that community in terms of patreon i can give back to the people supporting me through patreon in different ways and i will be rolling out some of that stuff so if you are supporting me through patreon there are a few different things that i have plan to roll out through patreon okay more on this later okay so there are things that i could give back to the people that are supporting me through patreon through twitch as well there's a little bit of return i can give people right subscribers i can give them powers that they wouldn't have if they didn't if they weren't subscribed they may be little emotes that uh, Casey thank you very much Casey um, the person that created the banners for YouTube and Twitter and Twitch he created little emotes that people can use on Twitch right through discord as well I have mods that are helping me out there setting up the discord platform uh, and providing options for people and keeping the dialogue going so I can give back that way with people who have donated me you know donated cryptocurrencies that's anonymous right that there's a certain amount of privacy anonymity there so there isn't much i can do in terms of returning that favor other than creating this content and sharing as much information as i can just the same way through youtube people that have made direct donations i can give back a little bit more as well once i start rolling out some of the things that i want to do through patreon right specifically related to some of the comic books I've published right and other types of donations as well I could return some of the favor right now keep in mind one of the most important things about all of these revenue streams coming in aside from the crypto discord twitch patreon YouTube direct donations mainly through PayPal or e-transfers this one not as much all of these here there's a record of everything taking place so there's zero privacy there's zero anonymity right 
So everything is being tracked. And one of the most important things, one of the reasons the cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology came to be is because people, uh, a huge part of that anyway, was because people wanted to maintain their anonymity. Since one thing that's going on right now in the world is there's a lot of countries, a lot of places, in a lot of economies, a lot of governments are trying to go cashless, right? And if you end up going cashless in a society and everything is being tracked, then what happens is you end up losing your anonymity. You end up losing your privacy. And if you lose your privacy, that means you lose your liberty, right? So all of these revenue streams coming in, in Web 2.0, right? There's a track record of everything. There's a record of who, what, where, when, right? And if anybody wants to access that information, they can to a certain degree. The people that really have access to that information are governments. For example, in Canada last year or a few months ago, the Canadian government sent a notice to PayPal requiring PayPal to release all the information to Canadians who have had business transactions or activity through PayPal, right? That's a serious breach of, I don't know if you want to call it breach. Some people would agree with it, some people would not, okay? I'll leave it up to you if you would think that's a good idea or a bad idea, right? But when it comes to cryptocurrencies and ICOs, there's a certain amount of privacy there, right? A large amount of privacy there, anonymity there, right? So when it comes to ICOs, initial coin offerings, as soon as I realized this was a thing, then it got the juices flowing and I realized this is what I could do. Since the work I'm doing is really mathematics related, right? That's what I'm doing. I'm going to be rolling this out, creating modules, teaching certain types of mathematics, depending on what you want to learn. That's some of the stuff I've created for math in real life, right? We've done the mathematics of food and farming. We've done the mathematics of art and design. We're gonna do the mathematics of many other things, right? So just imagine if you're creating a module, for me specifically, creating modules for the mathematics of food and farming and putting a little booklet together, exercises, solutions, videos, and basically teaching people who wanna be able to farm, grow food, to be able to do the mathematics required to be able to do that for themselves, right? And that's what personally I'm working towards. Now, all of that information will be available free online. I've made this promise at the beginning and they will always be there, right? But there will be modules available for sale. There will be products, merchandise available for sale. So it is a business that I'm working towards. So once ICOs become a thing, and they are a thing, at some point, right? And this is really what the possibilities of ICOs and cryptocurrencies are. This is what they really offer us, right? They offer us privacy, anonymity, and they offer us to do crowdfunding, to do initial coin offerings, right? To get seed money, to roll out whatever project that we're working on to the next level. So for me, what I could do with these ICOs is create some kind of white paper, which is basically put together a white paper, which is basically what my business model is and what I propose, right? And that could be related to creating a certain number of coins. Let's call them Chicho coins for lack of a better word. And I like that, Chicho coins, right? So I could put out a certain number of Chicho coins, right? Let's call this 1 million Chicho coins. It could be equivalent to a million shares in a company on the stock market, right? So I could put out a million Chicho coins. Let's call them tokens. And that's what they're referred to when it comes to ICOs. And what you can do with those tokens is offer those tokens to investors, right? Now for me, since I've been having people supporting me through Patreon, Twitch, Discord, direct donations, other donations or whatnot, I could give back to 
everyone supporting me as well, right? So this could be a two-way thing, coming back, supporting people who have supported me up to this point and offering them a certain number of tokens for what they've done, right? For Patreon, we could even add a multiple in there. People who have supported me for one year could get a two times multiple of coins. People who have supported me for two years, right? They could get a three times multiple for what they've done. Same thing with the direct donations, same thing with Twitch, same thing with Discord, and same thing with what other, what other revenue streams ends up coming into play, right? So this could be me creating a white paper saying that I'm gonna create a certain number of tokens and give back to the community that's been supporting me. And what I could do is say, a token would give you a certain amount of power for this company, this organization, the work I've been creating online, right? It could be a certain type of voting, right? where you could decide the type of content we start creating, right? I could also return that by in the white paper specifying that a certain amount of funds would go into a pool, right? Into a fund and that fund, as long as we're positive, right? Once revenue starts being generated through merchandise, right through modules right then a certain amount of those funds coming in could go into a fund which will be dispersed to those who hold tokens right that would be one way to give back to the people who have supported me up to this point or up to the point where we come up with the ICO with the chicho coins to give back to those who have help me reach that point right and that could be considered the people here could be considered on the same level as angel investors people who had faith who had trust right who gave me credit right who believed in what i was doing right so a certain amount of funds could go back to all of those people right or to people who also purchased some of the tokens okay in the white paper we could say there's a percent growth right percent growth based on the cpi the consumer price index or whatever inflationary measure we would want to use we could say more tokens would be available every year based on the growth rate based on inflation or we could keep this, the number of tokens, right? The number of shares as absolute. And if Chicho, this company starts doing very well, then what would happen is the amount of funds, the amount of money going into this fund to be dispersed to those people who hold these tokens, which has become more and more, right? We could do a secondary offering, right? You could do a secondary offering, which is very, one of the things that happens a lot in Wall Street where shares get diluted, right? We could, if we reached a certain point where we had institutions, and I've had institutions, just so you know, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I've had institutions in the last few years contact contact me and ask me to create modules for them right that they would like to purchase to teach their students to do mathematics right so if we reach that level where we have multiple modules available and there's institutions that want to purchase these modules right then what we could do is do a secondary offering of maybe 10 million tokens or a million tokens or a hundred thousand tokens or whatever tokens there might be which would give them 
different powers and would come up with a different type of white paper to distinguish these tokens from these tokens, which is something that happens in Wall Street, right? With secondary offerings or whatnot. Every company has different class of shares that people own, okay? Obviously, the first tokens, the Chicho coins, would have the most power because those were the people that decided to get involved from the get-go, aside from the angel investors, right? Those who had faith, okay? This is a game changer. This is basically what this would do is automate a lot of the bureaucracy. It also makes things, provides privacy, anonymity, right? So unlike IPOs, when you invest in Wall Street, where there's a record of everything you've done and what you're getting back as dividends and these would be considered dividends coming back yearly or quarterly right dividends could be paid out right all of that being visible to the scrutiny of anyone if you're doing ipos through icos through cryptocurrencies through blockchain technology all of that information would be anonymous there'd be anonymity there'd be privacy to a level where i wouldn't even know who held these tokens everything would be stipulated in the white paper and the contracts right which is basically what it is would create a blockchain contract the contract would do things automatically and the only thing that would be available to be scrutinized would be what Chicho is producing, right? The amount of funds being raised by Chicho because there will be a certain amount of bureaucracy that this would have to go through to pass through some of the regulatory laws that are being passed right now, right? And the last thing I'd like to say regarding this is that is the following a very important and this is something that I think a lot of people are looking at and uh, it's gonna affect certain countries and communities any country that bans ICOs initial coin offerings that tries to put this disruptive innovation aside and prevent people from using this technology is going to see their growth rates come down their gdp gdp is a garbage measure of the health and wealth of a nation but since it's what people refer to uh the most anyway they're gonna see their gdp drop okay and any country that makes it easier for people to go out and introduce new more options to people in terms of content in terms of terms of services in terms of merchandise then those countries are going to start prospering okay that's uh, that's basically the main gist of uh, what i wanted to sort of cover in this it's just a little short little bit of information to continue on with our discussion we've been having regarding cryptocurrencies regarding blockchain technology and regarding ICOs and what the possibilities of this new disruptive innovation is and how that might play out within our society okay that's it for now I'll see you guys in the next video